Scattered across this great country are automotive treasures. Collector cars owned by top enthusiasts. Rare gems of rich pedigree. We invite them all to come to Auto Geek's garage and show off their proudest vehicles. While we get to ask, what's in Auto Geek's garage? Welcome to another episode of What's in Auto Geek's Garage. I'm your host, Mike Phillips, and today my celebrity guest is an NHRA Pro Comp Eliminator, World Champion, and co-host of Truck U, Bruno Massel. Mike, good morning, man. Great having me on here today. I really appreciate it. Hey, I'm glad you could be here. What do you think about this wild truck? I mean, this thing is awesome. I mean, if you're going to do something like this, I mean, you need it to pop, right? And what better than this bright yellow? This is gorgeous. And the flames really set off. Hey, I've got the owner here, Lou Jones. Lou, come on in. Lou, beautiful truck. How you doing? Thank you. Thank you very much. Come on over here, man. Tell me all about it. It's a, it's a 47, right? Yes. I know that you didn't get this thing off a showroom floor like this. What did it begin with? Tell me, tell me its story. It was uh, basically in someone's backyard. They were, they, I think they were going to just dispose of it, junk it. I was looking for something to, uh, to play with. And uh, just basically, was, my original idea was I was going to take it and make it something to go to the go to the local store with and just a beater run around town until I built what it was I wanted. And uh, it just kind of got a life of its own. Next thing you know, I'm down to the frame and all the rivets and everything <laughs> else. So, uh, five years later, we've got this uh, beauty. Yeah, and it was it, it evolved as I went because I you know I bought all new rubber and new glass for the windows and then decided to cut it off. I bought new door handles and then decided to shave them. Uh, you know, it just things change over a period of five years. Uh, and I can see that. And the thing is, everything has, looks like there's a method to the madness of what went on here. You went completely frame off, started basically from the ground up, yes. which is really the right way to do it. I've seen people try and patch and polish and cover up a lot of things, but it seems like you really rebuilt it the right way. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's what I had to do because it, it was just a real mess. Now, I've heard you're an old drag racer, and yes. so you and I are kind of one of the same heart. Let's look underneath the hood and see what we got. Okay. Tell me you didn't put a four cylinder or a six cylinder in this thing. Uh, okay, I'll tell you I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> what are we looking at here? It's a small block Chevy. The only thing basically that would fit. Chevy truck should have a Chevy engine in it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm a purist as well. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Now, <clears throat> I see you had some obstacles to work with under here with the, with the whole frame and chassis of this yes. thing. Yeah, originally the power there, the steering box was on top of the frame, and I only had three quarters of an inch to work with Ooh. between the head and the steering box, so I had to modify that. That was my biggest obstacle. Uh, but you can see by looking at it, uh, the drag racing heritage. I can tell you one thing right here. It says NOS Cheater on it, and that's yeah. something that's always a whole lot of fun to play with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I never would have had that, but my wife bought it for me. My fiance bought it for me, and. Uh, so I decided to put it on. Well, well, you know what? When you got power right at the push of a button, it always makes things a little more interesting. Oh yeah. You know, I've noticed Mike's been uh, checking over this truck pretty thoroughly. Why don't we come back here and see what he found? Because he's sure. always got a way of tweaking things and making them well a little bit better than they were when he first found them. What do you see here, Mike? Well, I checked out the paint, and you've done a great job. It's glossy. It's clear. There's no swirls inside. Look at the painted dash. I mean, all the paint, the roll bar looks awesome, and it's shiny. The only thing that isn't shining is this beautiful diamond plate bed that you created down here. So what I'd like to do is show you how to make this shine just as good as the paint. What do you think? Great idea. That's, now, the, that's the one area I always neglect. Now, have you ever tried it before, like just polished by hand? Oh yeah, I've, I've done some work with it by hand. It's, it's Diamond plate's rough to work with. Though, It'll you wear know. your hand out, won't it? Yeah, it wears the rags off, too. <laughs> how about I show you how to do this by machine the quick and simple way? Great. Okay, what I have here is a product by Optimum Polymer Technologies. This is their Optimum Metal Polish. Now, the chemist for Optimum Polymer Technologies is a very good friend of mine. His name is Dr. David Gaddusi, and I trust anything he makes. I think he's going to make this look like a mirror. But instead of working by hand, what we're going to do is i got a rotary buffer with a wool pad, okay? This thing's really strong. It has a lot of power. And all we're going to do is just come down here. We're going to just put some of this right here on the diamond plate. And we're going to let the machine do all the work. Now to spread this out, I'm going to put this down on a real low RPM. And sometimes it's just a lot easier to take the handle off. And then just to hold the forward part here. And that way you can apply pressure right down on the top of the motor. So watch this. You're going to see a lot of blackness coming off there. That's mm -hmm. the oxidized aluminum. Mm 
And for that reason, you're going to want to get a pad cleaner too, because you're going to have a lot of oxidized aluminum come off on your pad there. Clean that, you want to get what's called a spur. They want to have plenty of towels, because you want to come back and wipe all this off. What this is going to do is reveal a brilliant, almost chrome-like mirror finish. Oh, yeah. Wow. And we took all the elbow grease out of it. You're not going to wear out your fingers. <laughs> really? That's the best part, Mike. Yeah. How's that look? Makes the rest of it look bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to set you up with everything you need so you can go home and finish this in your garage. Fantastic. Okay. Hey, we're going to be right back. Yeah, all you gotta do is just a little bit of elbow grease when you go to wipe it off. It'll look like brand new. What's in Auto Geek's Garage is being brought to you by Meguiar's. Meguiar's car care product since 1901. By Lake Country, pioneering manufacturers of buffing and polishing products sold worldwide. And by Minzerna, the world's finest polishing materials. What do the following award-winning car designers and builders have in common? Chip Booth. Brian Fuller, Alan Johnson, Justin Padfield, Mark Stilo, Steve Stroke, Denny Terzich, Troy Trepanier. They all depend on ARP fasteners. Leading car builders depend on ARP fasteners, and so should you. ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. The best looking cars on the road deserve only the best when it comes to car care. Pinnacle Natural Brilliance. Pinnacle Sovereign Paste Wax is all natural. It uses ivory carnauba wax to create a sizzling shine. Pinnacle literally has a product for every square inch of your car. For more information about the entire line of Pinnacle products and for some valuable tips and techniques, check out PinnacleWax.com or AutoGeek.net. Mike, I gotta say, I didn't expect to see a motor like this in this truck. It's Man, awesome. It's completely cleaned up, sanitized. Every engine compartment should look like this. Hey, welcome back to What's in Auto Geek's Garage. My celebrity guest, Bruno Massel, and I got the owner, Dave Walker, here with his 1955 Chevy. Come on in, Dave. How you doing, guys? Good. How you doing? Nice to see you. Beautiful truck, Dave. Thank Beautiful. You. Thank I mean, you very much. So, 55 First Series. To the people at home, what does that mean, really? Well, it's basically a 54 body style built in 55. What was left over in 54, they built them on through in the 55, so they called it a first series. And they had a Chevrolet high performance engine in it, I'm sure, back then, right? Originally, <laughs> it was a six cylinder, three speed, red truck, work truck for the state of Virginia, actually. Wow, now what condition did you get this thing in? It was pretty close to what it is right now. I just uh, I added another 100 horsepower and another gear. So I like that. I'm a racer at heart, so I can understand the horsepower. You always got to throw a little more power to it. Yeah. yeah. Now step back the truck with me and, and walk me through it a little bit. The paint on this thing is gorgeous. It's a uh, Mazda teal color, uh, PBG paint. Just a newer version of the original color, you know. And uh, this is a Cadillac pearl here, and then it's got two other different tones in the uh, pinstriping. Now, you've been a collector for quite some time, am I right? My whole life, yeah. You know, have you owned a lot of trucks? There's been cars. What's been your thing? I've had probably 25, 30 trucks. I've only owned two cars in my life. The rest of them are trucks. I'm a truck guy, so I, I can relate to that. Yeah. Now, stepping back across this thing, sure. you've got the, the chrome handrails here, the hard tunnel cover. All of it really ties in well. What about this truck is your favorite? Really, everything, just the color, the quality of the paint job, just the quality of the restoration just caught my eye right off the bat. Now, do you actually drive this thing, or is it just a show? Quite a bit, yeah. Nice, nice. What about the two-tone here? I mean, this is pretty cool. It just, it all ties in well. It's just another one of the things that really attracted me to the truck. Very cool, very cool. Now, Mike up front has always found something with these vehicles that <clears throat> you and I usually can't see, and it's something to help bring these things to life a little bit more than they already are. Mike, what have you found with this, with this truck right now? Well, there's nothing wrong with this truck. <laughs> Everything about this is just over the top. But one thing I wanted to share with you, and I'm going to just gonna take a guess. You probably don't ever wash this, introduce water to all the cracks and crevices. Not a whole lot. Not if I can help cause it. rust and yeah. you can't get in there and dry it. So what I want to share with you is just a tip. And there's the, what I want to share is clear up some of the confusion between what we call a spray detailer and what I have over here is a spray wax. Now, these are both by the Meguiar's company. 
And this is from their Ultimate line. So we have Ultimate Spray Detailer, Ultimate Spray Wax, and sometimes there's a confusion about when to use one mm -hmm. or if you need to use them both. And so the Spray Detailer is to remove light dust, fingerprints, and smudges. And I know when you have this at a car show, you probably have people that walk up and say, wow, what a beautiful truck, and then they touch it. Mm -hmm. And I don't all know why, time. all the time. And I don't know why that is, but people always feel like they gotta walk over and touch a beautiful car. But this is for removing light dust, fingerprints, and smudges. And this has their hydrophobic polymer technology. And what the hydrophobic means is water fearing. So if any kind of rain or a sprinkler goes off, the water is actually going to try to get away from the paint so it doesn't cause a water spot. And fill this right there where I wiped this, fill how slick that is. Nice. Okay. So that's what this is for, spray detailer, to remove light dust, fingerprints, and smudges. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this is their ultimate spray wax. Okay. Now sometimes people confuse this for removing light dust. But you would never want to remove light dust, fingerprints, and smudges with a wax. You use this after the detailer. So after you've removed anything that might scratch the paint, then you can quickly lay down to coat a high gloss wax in a spray version. Now the first time you use this, it has a little safety seal there, so you want to pop that off. Then you just want to mist some of this on, take a clean microfiber towel, spread this around, turn to the dry side, and then wipe that off to a high shine. Okay, now feel it. <laughs> so before we remove nice. the light dust, okay, now we just put down a coat of wax protection. And it's fast and easy. And man, it just it tops this off like frosting on cake. <laughs> We're going to be right back, so stay tuned. Now you can do the rest of the car. Blackfire Car Care products are proudly made in the USA and offer a complete line of interior and exterior products to clean, condition, polish, and protect every inch of your car from top to bottom. Blackfire products are formulated using state-of-the-art polymer technology for ease of use and superior performance. Blackfire compounds, polishes, and waxes are famous for creating that deep, wet shine that everyone loves. Don't just turn heads, create whiplash. Visit AutopiaCarCare.com. Whether you're an automotive enthusiast, professional detailer, or body shop technician, the secret to the perfect shine is machine polishing with Lake Country pads. The key to a flawless show car finish is matching the right pad to the job, and Lake Country has a pad for every detailing project. Lake Country is the industry leader in product development with over 60 years of hands-on detailing experience. When you're ready to machine polish, buy the best Lake Country pads. AutoGeek.net has everything you need to keep your vehicle looking its very best. Mothers, Meguiar's, 3M, Pinnacle, just to name a few. In fact, AutoGeek carries over 60 brands with thousands of unique items. The expert staff can answer any question you have about any product via email, discussion forum, live chat, or by phone. The selection is huge, the prices are low, and they ship it right to your door. It couldn't possibly get any easier. AutoGeek.net, we are car care. Mike Phillips here. I've been buffing out cars all my life and teaching classes on machine polishing paint since 1988. And out of all the polishes I've ever used, I've never found anything that outperforms Manzerna polishes for a true show car finish. Made in Germany since 1888, Manzerna offers a complete line of compounds, medium cut, fine cut, and ultra fine cut polishes to create a high gloss finish just like you see here. Check out ManzernaUSA.com. It's time now for Off the Shelf. Quick tips on detailing your car with Mike Phillips. And brought to you by McGuire's Car Care Products. Okay, that works good. This week's question comes from Mark in Alabama. And Mark writes in and asks, Mike, I have a mobile detailing business and I need a product that will enable me to wash my customers' cars in locations where I don't always have access to a hose and water. Well, Mark, Meguiar says the perfect product for you. It's called Meguiar's Rinse-Free Express Wash. This is a high lubricity, highly concentrated product that will enable you to wash your car without a hose and a bucket. Basically, you're going to take and mix one ounce per gallon. Now, I've already got two gallons mixed up over here, so I'm ready to go. I started at the roof and started working down. And here's how simple this product is to use. Take a microfiber towel, gather up some solution, 
and then you want to wash one panel at a time. Then after you wash one panel, you're going to want to quickly go ahead and dry this off. Now the high lubricity formula is going to enable you to clean one panel at a time without inducing any swirls or scratches into the paint. So now this is washed, grab a clean microfiber towel, and then just carefully wipe that off. And this product restores a high gloss shine as you wash the car. Another nice feature about this car is if you work in a body shop, this product is body shop safe. So you can clean the cars without any fear of introducing any contaminants to a fresh paint environment. Just like that. That's Meguiar's Rinse-Free Express Wash. And that's this week's car care tip for Off the Shelf. Yeah, I think we'll give that a try, see how okay. it works. Hey, welcome back. I'm here with my celebrity guests, Bruno Massel and Bob Palmer, the owner of this really cool 1972 Opel GT. I think they used to call this the poor man's Corvette, didn't yeah. they? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, you know, I growing up, I saw one of these at the drag strip, and it had a little tag on the back, said the good, the bad, and the Opel. And man, this thing is just a neat little car you got, Bob. Thank you. Well, the paint on this thing's silver. Did you actually do it yourself? Because it's really got a great finish to it. Yeah, um, we put the car on a rotisserie and I painted all underneath the uh, engine compartment, did all the fender flares and everything, and then for the final paint, we took it over to my friend's body shop. Nice. Did it in the spray booth. So why the Opal? I gotta ask. Well, the old story. I had one when I was young. Had bought a new one in 1970. Liked it, put a million miles on it, and uh, here we are again. All right, come around the back of this thing, because you mentioned something about the flares in this car, and this is something you don't see every day. <clears throat> you know, it's got that nice wide stance to it. It's got, you know, the Porsche road racing look. It really brought this car out, give it kind of that masculine look yep. to it. Well, they were kind of wimpy, you know. They, <laughs> they had 13-inch wheels on them and great big wheel wells. They just didn't look great. Well, now, you know, the stance on this thing looks good. It's got a nice wide bubble fender in the back. What other things have you done to this car since you picked it up? Um, well, the suspension is more or less stock. It's got a front roll bar, rear roll bar, and then the engine is a Mazda Miata, and the transmission is the Miata, too. Oh, you don't see that every day? No. No. That's... All right, Miata engine up underneath the hood, nice big wheels and tires and back. This thing came factory by what, 70 horsepower, 80? Hey, a whole 90, I think. Oh, 90, maybe. okay. Maybe 85. <laughs> well, you know, let's check out the Miata, because I think you got a little more under the hood okay. than that these days. So the Miata, what are we kicking now? Uh, this is 140. Oh wow, that's a tight and fit in there. And it's uh, it's stock right at the moment. But okay. Lots of options for that. Now, w when you decided to pick this car, was there a problem with the engine, or was it just a horsepower gain? No, just for? a horsepower thing. You know, one people thing people don't realize is how big these things are inside. Yeah. You know, you're a bigger guy. How, do you have problems fitting in it? No. Um, as a matter of fact, I have an original brochure from '72. And they say the, this thing is 45 inches of leg room. Wow. Yeah, which well, is amazing. Yeah, you, you wouldn't think it. Here, come, come around the front here. I, wanna, I want to uh, introduce Mike to talk to you a little bit about something that can bring this paint to life even a little bit more. You know, Mike's the expert here. That's my theory. This is his. I'm going to get out of his way. Okay. I like how he stuffed that engine. There's no room for anything no, else, there that's for sure. <laughs> You know, you did a great job now. You told me you painted this and you sanded it and yep, buffed it yourself. Yep. Okay. And you used nothing but a rotary buffer, nope, right? That's it. Well, when I look at this, and it's really hard to see defects on silver metallic paint. So now this is a scroll finder, right? When I look at it, uh, silver is just so good at hiding everything. But if you look closely, can you see those really fine, looks like water spots, yep. a little bit of sandy yep. scratch maybe left over? Uh, what I want to show you is a one step product by Manzerna USA. And they are a leader in compound and polish technology, and their products are excellent to work with with either a rotary buffer or with a DA polisher. Mm -hmm. So, and you were saying that the one thing you didn't like about the rotor is how messy it was. Yeah. Let me show you something that'll take the mess out of it. And this product has just a little bit of cut to it, okay? So this is actually a sealing wax. It's the Manzerna sealing wax. So it's gonna leave it protected, but at the same time, it's gonna help us just to bring up the gloss by removing some of those real subtle imperfections that are remaining in the paint. So all we're gonna do is gonna take and put some of this right on here, right on the face of the pad. See, if this works good, I have two other cars you can do. Well, I only do a spot, see? Bruno oh, knows that. Yeah. I'm real good at showing you how to do a spot. I always put the quarter over your shoulder, and never turn this on until it's in contact with the paint. Now the sealing wax is going to, like I said, it's going to remove some of these really light defects that only we can see under these kind of lights. It's going to leave it protected, so you're going to do this in one step, you're done, ready to go cruising.
Always let that pad stop before you lift that polisher off. Now another thing about this, you ever had a wax that you just got to fight to get off? Oh, Watch yeah. this. Let that dry a little bit until it hazes. Watch this. See how nice that wipes off? Now what I want you to do is I want you to look at here and then here. Can you see the difference? Yeah. It's completely mm -hmm. like a silver mirror now and feel the difference. You can feel how slick it is up here. Yeah. And this car is small enough. You can knock this out in probably less than an hour. We should have it done by now. <laughs> <laughs> we go get lunch. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We're going to go to break and I'm going to show Bob here how to machine wax his own car. <laughs> Here you go. What's in Auto Geek's Garage has been brought to you by Poor Boys, polishing and detailing products made in the USA, by Diamondite, the ultimate glass and plastic care systems, and by Flex, the original. Blackfire Car Care products are proudly made in the USA and offer a complete line of interior and exterior products to clean, condition, polish, and protect every inch of your car from top to bottom. Blackfire products are formulated using state-of-the-art polymer technology for ease of use and superior performance. Blackfire compounds, polishes, and waxes are famous for creating that deep, wet shine that everyone loves. Don't just turn heads, create whiplash. Visit AutopiaCarCare.com. For a lot of us, the automobile is the second biggest investment that we make. Now, one of the best ways to protect this investment is with the entire line of Wolfgang car care products. Wolfgang Fusion uses German-engineered super polymers blended with ivory carnauba wax for long-lasting protection with a three-dimensional crystal-like shine. For more information about the entire line of Wolfgang car care products and time-saving tips and techniques, check out WolfgangCarCare.com or AutoGeek.net. Amazing results, even in full sun. Now go have fun. This is sweet. You bet it's sweet. This is a 1966 Chevy 2 SS, and I've got the owner, Russell Woodward, right over here. Hi, Russell. How you Hi, doing? Mike. This is Bruno. Hi, Bruno. How are you doing? Russell, beautiful car, man. Thank you. You know, yellow looks so good on these classic body lines Chevy has right here. Yes, this is a screaming yellow out of a late model Corvette. Oh man, it goes perfect with this body style. You know, it makes it really stand out going down the road. I mean, not that the Chevy 2 needs something to make it stand out, but this yellow is awesome. I, did, did this come originally this way? No, it did not. It came, it, when I bought it, it came yellow like this, but when it came from the factory, it was a cream color yellow. Okay, and so you had to do a lot of re restoration to this vehicle when you got it, but you came back with the yellow, I see. When I, I had it about a year and a half, and then the car started just falling apart, rusting apart. And uh, I took it to a body shop, had it all done, taken care of, and as you see it, that's what it is. You know, one thing I have question is, the Chevy 2 and the Nova, you know, where does one end, where does the other begin? 1962, they started Chevy 2s, and they went through 1967, 68 was a Nova. Okay, so what about the Chevy 2 made you go through, you know, the restoration twice to bring it back to this bright yellow, why this car? First off, uh, when I graduated in high school, 66, my friend got one of these, and I loved it. I always loved it, and I watched them even race and stuff like that, but uh, it was my dream, so when I retired, I bought one. Nice, nice. You know, we all got to have dreams, and I, I like dreams that end with cars, especially yeah. ones that look this good. Now, I'm a racer, so under the hood, I'm always going to ask you, what's there? What, what, what are we looking at? It's a 327 motor. It has fuelie heads. Uh, it's got a comp cam in it. Uh, four barrel, of course. It's got a 700R transmission, uh, air conditioning, power steering. No power steering, sorry, no power steering. Well, under, you know, you look inside the vehicle. I like the fact that everything looks stock and it, it remains original to the, that original muscle car feel. Yes. You know, Mike, you're always looking these things over because you're looking for the little details that make the difference. And it looks like he's got a lot of wax on the scene. It looks good, but maybe it went a little too far. 
So, Russell, now that all the hard work's done, what's your favorite thing to do? Waxing the car. Just keeping wax. It, keeping it clean and shiny. Just spending a Saturday afternoon putting a coat of wax on? Yes, sir. You know, if you wax your car too often, you can actually get what's called a wax buildup. And believe it or not, by putting a coat of wax on here, a lot of times you'll have uh, dirt and dust, other kinds of impurities that you'll actually start to seal in and actually you can actually diminish the clarity. So periodically, what's a good idea is to strip off all the old wax and get down to what we call a fresh base. And then put a fresh coat of wax on. Okay. Now to do that, I'm going to show you how to use some products from the Lake Country pad manufacturers. Now, these are three different types of pads. This is a very soft finishing pad. Feel this. Run your oh, hand across there. Feel how coarse that is. That's a cutting pad, and this is a polishing pad. It's kind of in between those two. Oh, yeah. Now, if you use the wrong pad, like this cutting pad, for a finish this nice, you could actually haze the paint. So what's important is to actually choose the right pad. And for this, we're going to use a soft polishing pad and a light paint cleaner. Now, I've already got one on a DA polisher here. And this is non-abrasive, so it's not going to put any scratches in. It's not going to remove any scratches either. All it's really going to do is it's going to perfectly prepare this paint for a fresh coat of wax by stripping off all those old layers of wax. And I think you're going to see how much brighter the paint gets. I'm going to put my cord over my shoulder. And all you want to do is make three or four passes over each section of paint here like this. <laughs> Always let that pad stop spinning before you pull it off. Okay. That way you won't splatter yourself or anybody standing around. <laughs> and then take a nice clean microfiber towel folded four ways just like this. Gives you plenty of cushion. Spread the pressure from your hand. And you don't, let, you don't need to let a paint cleaner dry. So just come down here and gently wipe that off. And what we've done is we've taken off all the old layers of wax. We're down to what I was calling a fresh base. Now what I want you to do is I want you to take and I want you to wipe from here where I didn't polish across the section where I polished down to here. Notice where it's slipperier. Oh, wow. Cold. There you go. Yeah. Can you tell there's a difference yeah, there? Tell. This is tougher, isn't it? Now we're down to a fresh base, perfectly for applying a coat of wax, and I can show you how to do that by machine too. Okay. Thank you. Hey, that's it for this episode. Join me next week when I'll have another celebrity guest. We'll be checking out some more amazing cars. All products featured on today's program are available from autogeek.net.